Hello everyone, Mav Hunter here from the YouTube channel Mav's Outdoor Adventures. Here we are in late June 2021. July is just around the corner and right after July will be the start of several early archery deer and elk seasons. I know I'm looking forward to my late August season west of Flagstaff where I'll be in pursuit of over-the-counter mule deer bucks. This video is going to be about what's in my quote kill kit day in and day out. This is my basic kill kit and I, it never changes. I never remove anything unless I use it and if I use it I replace it or clean it and replace it. But this is about my basic kill kit. Now also in my pack I may take some additional items and I'll review those items as well in this video segments. It can vary a lot depending on the season. In early season, I find a kill kit is really essential, especially if you're away from your vehicle or camp, to get your game processed as quickly as possible as temperatures in the early August, early September seasons in the West can be up in the 80 degrees. Whereas in the winter time often, I'm just a simple hunting knife I can get away with just hunting from the vehicle. But day in, day out, for the last 20 years, I've always carried my basic kill kit. So without further ado, let's go into the next segment where I break down what's in my basic game processing slash field kit. Thank you. Zippered pouch. This happens to be a Kafaru pocket, large pocket. But I like keeping everything I need in one place, one pocket. And therefore, whether this is in my day pack or whether it's in my backcountry pack, when when game is down, when a buck or bull is down, I know right away I pull this out. And this is everything I need to get started processing that buck or that bull elk. Let's open it up here, see what we have. First off, I carry 50 to 100 feet paracord. This happens to be reflective paracord, so at night a flashlight or headlamp will reflect off of it. The most recent addition the last two years I have in my kill kit is a cut proof glove. And I use the term cut proof uh, liberally, but if you're working and the knife comes across your fingers, it's not going to cut into the glove. Uh, if you want to take and jab the knife in here, it's going to go in through the glove. So it's really not uh, knife proof, but it gives you some protection against getting any little cuts when you're working, working the game. I have some surveyor's tape. This is for if I need to mark my kill site. In marking my kill site, oftentimes I will also enter the GPS coordinates as a waypoint, either into my uh, GPS watch or into my Garmin inReach uh, satellite device. I enter these waypoints so, particularly backcountry, I come back to the exact spot, whether it's daylight or if I have to, early in the evening when it's dark. And also, if I'm not hunting solo, which is usually 75% of the time. So that other 25% of the time, if I have hunting partners with me, a lot of times I will send them the coordinates to their satellite uh, in reach device. And a lot of times headed back to camp or the vehicle, they'll stop back to the vehicle or camp for me, which is a big, a big help. So second item are game bags. I use the Caribou brand of game bags. I've been using these for um, 11 years and I'm really happy with them. And two uh, rear quarter bags so they'll hold an entire rear quarter of a bull elk. So I have two of those. You'll notice I'm a fan of having Ziploc bags with everything. Uh, not only does it help keep it dry in case I'm out in wet weather, but this large two gallon Ziploc bag also comes in handy if I'm bringing back the heart or the liver. 
The second set of game bags I have is our two smaller bags. One is a very small bag. I'll open it up here. And this caribou game bag is essentially for uh, my tenderloin cuts and other fine premium cuts of the game meat. And then I also have a medium size game bag and this is for deboned meat. So that'll hold uh, neck meat, rib meat, brisket, uh, shank, etc. I will on occasion carry extra game bags in my pack, whether it's my day pack or my multi-day pack, but these four bags are always in this kill kit. Talking about bags, I also take two large contractor trash bags. These come in very handy for when I'm packing meat out. I can essentially take the rear quarter that's bagged and put it in one of these bags and then strap it to my pack. That helps keep my pack clean and keeps the blood off of the pack as well. So, um, you know, trying to keep as much blood off your gear and clothes is important, especially if you're in bear country. Another essential I have is this is emergency survival blanket, uh, multi-purpose. Mostly this is used where um, if I don't have a ground sheet tarp with me, I can use this and unfold it and use this as a ground sheet tarp so I can lay my processed meat or my bag meat. I can lay this on this as a tarp and it helps keep my meat clean from dirt. It also helps keep it dry. And in a pinch, I can pitch this over the meat too if it's rain, once again, to try to keep the meat as clean and dry as possible. In addition to the cut proof gloves, something I've had now for over 20 years is I always have some latex gloves. At first I started with surgical latex gloves and they work great, but the last 10 to 12 years, I like using these mechanic, the person that might work on your vehicle, they'll wear these gloves in the shop to protect their hands. I like the mechanic or the auto mechanic uh, latex gloves better than the surgical gloves because they're a little bit heavier so they don't break or cut as easily. And oftentimes I'll put these on and then I'll put my cut proof gloves over the top of these. So always have some wet wipes. Uh, these come in handy to, well, clean my hands off. Uh, and also clean my blades when I'm done with it so I don't have dried blood on my blades when I get back to camp. Just make the cleanup a lot easier. I always have these. These are a pair of uh, hot hands hand warmers. I always have these in my kill kit. And sometimes in mid to late season when it's cold and you take a break uh, from handling your game meat, uh, a couple of these in your pockets are great to have just to keep your hands warm for that 10 to 15 minutes that you take. Well, and this is a rubber band, just because, well, they come in handy. I mentioned how I mark game on my GPS. Well, a lot of times I will mark my kill site on the GPS, but if I'm leaving meat and I have to come back for it, I will always take my bagged meat that I've processed and I'll hang it in a tree a good couple hundred yards away from the kill processing site where the skeleton and the gut bag and the gut pile is. Um, and I do that to remove the meat away from the more easy to get gut pile and the skeleton. And I've been very successful doing that, haven't had any problem doing that. A lot of times I will mark the location of my meat with these little green glow sticks. Uh, they will glow for several hours. As a matter of fact, they'll glow for like six to eight hours. And I'll uh, open up one of these and shake it and snap it and hang it on a tree branch near my processed meat. And a lot of times I might take some of that down. I have a roll of electrical tape. I keep the electrical tape in a plastic bag because in warm temperatures, the edges get pretty tacky and sticky. And I don't want to get any adhesive on anything inside my bag. 
but electrical tape comes in handy for several uses. Uh, one primarily is to wrap around the tag of the animal that uh, I've taken. So electrical tape just comes in handy for that. And now we'll get into mimes. The first knife I always have start out with is a simple folding drop point knife. This happens to be a, a browning knife that I've had for years and years. And I can process an entire mule deer buck with this one knife. Although I will rarely use one knife on a deer, I'll usually use two. Uh, and certainly when I'm elk hunting, uh, I'm always using two or maybe even three. Um, like I say, when they get a little bit dull, there is something I use to sharpen them up. But uh, So we have a drop point knife with a saw edge and a gut hook. That's one of my favorites. I prefer a solid blade for most of my game processing. This happens to be SOG brand, a SOG brand. And this particular model is the Seal Pup. And it carries a nice, fine razor edge and I keep it that way. But um, I prefer a good solid blade over the replaceable blades, which has been a trend these last few years. I've tried the replaceable blades, and uh, to be honest, I've broken a couple of them. And I don't want to be breaking clay blades when I'm working on game. I just feel there's more chance to have an accident. The other thing with the surgical steel knives, you have to be very careful with those knives because they truly are uh, surgical sharp. And uh, you have to be careful you don't have an accident with those. And the last knife I've added the last couple of years has been a folding fillet knife. This one here is a Kershaw folding fillet knife. And the reason I like a folding fillet knife is the blade is flexible so when I'm taking off the back strap from the spine or the flank off of the outside of the ribs or removing the meat around the bony neck, this fillet knife really does a nice, quick, fast job. So a folding fillet knife. And those are the three knives that are always in my kill kit. And last but not least, I carry a little work sharp sharpening device. Uh, this will not bring a dull knife back, but this will help keep the fine edge razor sharp on your sharp knives. It has a diamond sharpener on one end and a ceramic on the other. And oftentimes when I'm working like this is with the seal pup and I feel it's not as sharp as it was when I started, I'll clean the blade maybe using one of those wet wipes or using another a piece of paper that I might have. And then what I'll do is I'll run the blade three, four, five times through the diamond. And then I'll reverse it and run the blade three, four, five times through the ceramic sharpener. And I've found that these little sharpening devices really keep the knife's edge uh, tuned up uh, during, during the work. So I always carry this little workshop shopper. And that concludes what's in my basic game processing slash field kit, day in, day out, whether I'm out for a half a day, a full day, or several days. That compagment will be on those additional tools that I may or may not use in processing game, which are always in my day pack or my multi-day pack.